When it comes to your truck, traction is the name of the game. I mean, after all, it is kind of a little bit important if you're looking to maybe start or stop or turn or, you know, pretty much just move your vehicle in any given direction in any situation. Guys up north know just how important the traction is because, well, if you don't have the right set of wheels and tires when it gets snowy and icy, there's not a lot of movement. But we're not here to talk about snow and ice and tires and wheels at all today and all of the seasonal depression that comes with winter, are we? Today, we are talking about arguably one of the biggest and best upgrades that you can do for your truck outside of a brand new set of wheels and tires from customoffsets.com and really finding out are traction bars actually worth it? Let's get it. Now, regardless of if you're looking for a set of BDS Recoil Series traction bars or you want something a little bit prettier and showier with a set of McGoy's bars, the good news is you can get both of those at customoffsets.com. Seriously, we carry them both. It's awesome. Additionally to that, we also have over 160, yes, 160,000 different wheels and tires in our inventory in the warehouse. It's pretty big, it's actually kind of wild, so if that's what you're after, be sure to check us out at the website. Maybe pick yourself up, you know, a set, maybe a new t-shirt while you're there, because we've got a bunch of t-shirts on clearance and you can look super cool because summer's coming, you need new shirts, you know, you gotta cut the sleeves off for sleeveless shirt. I get it, right, it's just the way it goes. All right, enough about all that. Let's talk about traction bars. Traction bars, ladder bars, track bars for short. There's a lot of different names for them out there, but what exactly do they do? Well, you see here, contrary to popular belief, the suspension on your truck doesn't actually stay still while you're driving down the road. Most folks like to believe that your rear axle, you know, your leaf springs and that stuff only move up and down as you go over bumps, but that's just simply not true and quite honestly couldn't be further from the truth. When it comes to the rear axle of your pickup truck, especially those that have leaf springs in the rear, that suspension moves and it moves a lot. One of the biggest downfalls of the leaf sprung suspension is that under load, these leaf springs have a tendency to bow or bend slightly, typically in sort of an S shape, right? Where the axle tips forward and the spring makes an S there. Not only does this create a lot of stress on the leaf springs themselves, but it also puts a ton of stress and strain on the different parts of the rear end of the truck, right? The differential, the, you know, the seals, the U-joints, stuff like that, as the differential is actually tipping upwards as those springs turn into an S. All that stuff's getting stressed, and if you're chasing horsepower or you tow a lot like I do, this problem is only going to be made worse because of the additional load that you're putting on those springs from the factory. Commonly, this is referred to as a thing called axle wrap, right? But how do you solve axle wrap? Enter stage left. That's my left, your right, the traction bar. The 1950s were a wild and beautiful time in American history for a lot of reasons, but perhaps one of the biggest was the rise of the American hot rod scene. A quick thumb through any historical book or magazine will let you know that the rage of the 1950s was souping up your car, making big power, or so they thought at the time, 250 horsepower, and one of the biggest challenges they faced at the time was putting the power down to the ground. Skinny little tires and leaf sprung suspensions all the way around were the perfect storm for axle wrap, and it left guys puzzled as to how to put their power down effectively. In an effort to combat axle wrap, a company out of California devised a way to brace the rear axle to the frame of the vehicle, and thus, the traction bar was born. Now, a traction bar works by essentially creating a third mounting point for the rear axle. Now, typically speaking, this traction bar is gonna mount to the rear axle, usually under the U-bolts, right, where the leaf spring and the block sits on top of the axle, and then it mounts underneath, and then it's gonna run on an angle up to the frame of the vehicle. This creates a triangle and essentially braces that axle against the frame under load, keeping it from tipping forward. Well, all of that is pretty fancy and it sounds super cool. What really matters here is that it's gonna keep your rear axle planted where it needs to be and keep it from moving around so that, you know, it doesn't kick up or slide around when you're like maybe doing a four wheel drive boosted launch in your Duramax because, you know, full send. Am I right? If you are shopping for traction bars, there are a few things that you should keep in mind. The first thing first is that not all traction bars are going to be created equally. When you shop for track bars or traction bars or ladder bars or whatever you wanna call them, you're gonna find that they range in price from just a few hundred bucks for a DIY kit all the way up to sometimes as much as two 
thousand buckaroos. And while fundamentally most traction bars are essentially doing the same thing, the cost difference comes in a few key areas. First and foremost, if you're after looks, then there are some great looking traction bars on the market. Typically, these are gonna be more of your ladder bar style bars, right? Like the Magoi's traction bars, for example. On the other side of the spectrum, though, are the traction bars like the BDS recoil system, which is more of a simplistic, less flashy, and just tube style design that's gonna run between the frame and the axle and ultimately just keep it planted. It's really a no bells, no whistles, and just all work type setup. Perhaps more importantly than that though, is that some traction bars are gonna be fixed and some float, right? Fixed traction bars mean that they have no movement, they have no give when you're driving down the road. This is a solid mount between the frame and the axle and it's gonna be best for putting down a lot of power as they don't move. However, this also means that your rear suspension is gonna be limited in some movement, which is ultimately just gonna stiffen the ride of your truck up at least a little bit. On the other hand, you have what's pretty typically referred to as a floating traction bar, again, like the Magoy's bars we talked about before that we put on my Duramax. These are kind of the best of both worlds, if you would, right? They have a floating mount design that only really contacts the frame when it's under a lot of load and the axle is starting to swing forward. So you don't get quite as much rigidity. However, it also rides a little bit smoother. Regardless though, whether you want a fixed or a floating traction bar, one thing is for sure, traction bars are a great form and function mod. They look cool, they help you put power down to the ground, and they're just freaking awesome. Are you running traction bars? Which brand? Let us know down in the comment section below, and as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With that, my name is Dustin, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.